And now, Daljit Dhaliwal. This week, we're devoting the entire program to modern-day slavery. Even though this heinous practice was abolished by most countries during the 19th century, it's estimated that there were close to 29 million slaves at the end of 2006. The biggest surge has been in sex slavery, where pimps and madams force millions of women and young children into sex for profit. To discuss this growing global industry, we're joined by Siddharth Kara, the author of a new book called Sex Trafficking Inside the Business of Modern Slavery. Siddharth, welcome to the program. Thank you. Let's talk first of all about the main forms of modern slavery and why does it still exist today? Yeah, by my estimate, there are three main types of slavery. There's bonded labor or debt bondage, there's forced labor, and then there's trafficked slaves. Now, slavery still exists today for many of the same reasons it's existed for, for centuries. Um, the supply side of slaves has long been driven by forces relating to poverty, uh, social instability, lawlessness, and acute bias against gender and ethnicity. And what do you think are the underlying factors? What, what factors do slaves have in common? I mean, if you could talk a little bit more about the economic aspects. Yeah, well, the, the fundamental economics of slavery, whatever form it takes, is to minimize the cost of labor, okay, by reducing it essentially to nil. So these various forms of slavery involve individuals who are seeking to maximize profits for whatever their enterprise is, whether it's forced labor in mining or construction or sex slavery, uh, they want to maximize profits by eliminating or minimizing the cost of labor. Your book um, focuses on sex slavery, and during the course of writing it, you met with hundreds of slaves. In fact, uh, I believe you actually witnessed some who were being sold. Talk in a little bit more detail about um, how this industry works. Or what are the commercial interests behind it? and uh, what are the mechanics of it? That's right. In more than a dozen countries in four continents, I met with scores and uh, ultimately hundreds of slaves, uh, many in, scores of which were sex slaves. And uh, I tracked them down in establishments in which they were being exploited at the time, whether that's clubs, brothels, massage parlors, apartments, or even street corners. And of course, I met with many slaves in shelters uh, after they had esca escaped. Um, and they were able to talk to me more extensively about their ordeals. Um, now, th these individuals have suffered brutish and grotesque crimes. Uh, in my mind, sex slavery is a fundamental human rights violation that should not uh, inhabit the planet at all. And it's also a form of slavery that primarily affects women, I believe, uh, according to the figures, and correct me if I'm wrong, only 4% of uh, men, and they're usually boys, are sex slaves. Why is it that it's women um, who are overwhelmingly the victims, and why is this particular area of slavery flourishing? Right. By, by my calculation and observation, uh, under 5% of today's sex slaves are male, and they're almost entirely male children. Um, the preponderance are females and young uh, female children. Now, sex slavery is thriving primarily because it is by far the most profitable form of slavery in the world. By my calculation, even though at present roughly 4% of the world's slaves are sex slaves, those same slaves generate almost 40% of the profits enjoyed by slave owners worldwide. That massive profit incentive is what drives interests around the world among organized crime networks and small-time criminals alike. And how does that compare to other lucrative illicit trades like weapons and um, drugs, for instance? Great question. And part of the logic of my book was to tr really try to get some reliable data, finally, on slavery and slave profits. Again, by my calculation, the profits generated by all forms of slavery in 2007 was $91.2 billion. That is second only to drug trafficking in terms of global criminal illicit enterprises. And where are most slaves um, concentrated in, and which countries are most involved as active sex slave consumers? Yeah, um, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, uh, the sort of policies and governance of economic globalization created three primary origins of today's trafficked sex slaves. And those areas are South Asia, Southeast Asia, and Central and East Europe. Now, from those regions, slaves are trafficked, acquired, and moved across the world into Western countries, developed countries. Um, almost no country is immune. So uh, these are where most of the slaves are or originating. Uh, 
Now, the, in terms of gross numbers, you'd have the most slaves in South Asia. But on a per capita basis, you actually have the highest levels of sex slavery in Europe. Let's talk a little bit about what kind of interventions do and don't work. Um, you know, if men want to go and have sex with women and they want to go and have sex with, with children, I mean, what chance is there, given that this industry is so lucrative, that you can, one, um, stem the flow of people having sex with women and children, and, and two, eradicate it? Yeah, um, the, the perhaps most illuminating aspect of an economic analysis of these crimes is that we should definitely focus our, our interventionist tactics on the demand side of the industry. Now, demand itself has several components. As you mentioned, there's demand for commercial sex, a man who wants to purchase a young girl for commercial sex. But there's also economic factors relating to demand. There's slave owner demand to maximize profit, and then there's also consumer demand to minimize retail price or the price elasticity of demand. I'm not a strong believer that we can educate and raise awareness uh, in order to minimize the consumption side of contemporary slavery. I feel if a, a man is predisposed to purchase a young girl for sex, it's an uphill battle to convince him otherwise. But I do believe the fundamental economic side of the demand equation of contemporary slavery is a strategic point of intervention for us to deploy more intelligent and uh, more well-funded and more aggressive interventionist tactics. You end your book with a narrative about uh, a young Burmese girl and you said that meeting her shook you to your mm -hmm. core. Talk a little bit about what you meant by that. Yeah, I, I, I use pseudonyms in the book um, when I share slave narratives. And uh, this young girl I call Aye. And I met her at a shelter in Chiang Mai in Thailand. And this was, I took three research trips uh, across a few years. Uh, and this was towards the end of my final research trip. And um, so many encounters with slaves had really depleted me emotionally. And I encountered Aye. Uh, and her, she, she shared her story with me for the first time. This was the first time she shared her story with anyone. And it was a tale of such uh, grotesque and violent exploitation from the ages of 4 to 14, 10 years of her life. She um, was a sex slave at age 4? Well, no, she actually was just a child slave. She was exploited in a, uh, a, a factory and a market where she was uh, beaten and tortured daily and forced to separate... Uh, you know, dried fruits and uh, to, to clean and other forms of just general forced labor. But the level and magnitude of her exploitation was so severe. She, when we met, she was hunched over. She was constantly plucking the skin from her fingers. And the shelter had to take her to a hospital several times because she didn't understand that she would get three meals a day. And when she saw food, she overate to almost to the point of a ruptured stomach. So IA was a really bleak encounter with me because she represented... Um, the most stark exploitation of, ch of, of children. Um, uh, slavery is abhorrent in any, in any circumstance, but s child slaves, whether they're exploited for forced labor or, s or, or sex, commercial sex, um, it's, a, it's a very difficult encounter, I think, for anyone. Well, thank you very much uh, for writing this book and shedding um, some more data on this subject, and thank you for being here. It's been my pleasure.